TG Geeks, episode 339, August 16th, 2021. Fighting Prejudice Through Learning. Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery. Sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I'm Keith Lane and we're coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely, uh, rainy Phoenix, Arizona for the last month. Yeah, I'm uh, monsoony. Monsoon is the phrase that I coined. Um, yeah, and I'm Ben Raginton here in very monsoony. Boy, did it storm last Holy night! Holy moly! Here in Phoenix, Arizona, mm, scared the kitty cats. <laughs> yeah, they didn't like lots of lightning, lots of thunder, lots of heavy rain. Yeah, it was quite amazing. Yes, let's get on with this. Prepare for hyperdrive. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Episodes, the two gay geeks are discussing this. Well, in this episode, we have got uh, Senor Amor from Youth Against Prejudice in the uh, talking to us today, and uh, we have uh, it, it's a very interesting conversation. It was a great I conversation. Was, I thought it was great. We even coined a new word. Yes, we did. The damn-demic. The damn-demic. <laughs> Then we're going to have our birthday shout outs, our featured podcast of the week, and the feedback. We got quite a bit of feedback that I saw there that you put into the mm -hmm. uh, script here. And then our shout outs in our second segment, I threw something in there if we oh. have time to talk about that. Oh, hopefully. And then our wacky weekly recap, and well, as well as our uh, closing shout outs and etc. So are you ready to oh, yes. get started with this? Let's do it. And this time we welcome to our show Senor Amor. He is the executive director of Youth Against Prejudice. You may have seen a couple of things that we've run on the website about that. And if you haven't, we're going to talk about Youth Against Prejudice. So welcome to the show, Senor. Thanks for having me. I'm such a pleasure. Sure. Hey, hey thank, thank you for coming you. on the show and thank you for giving us an interview. Exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, interview? It's been, a, it's been a while. What is I this mean, thing <laughs> called an interview? The the great pause has <laughs> caused so many things to just evaporate. It's it's amazing. Oh boy. And so tell us uh it just kind of give us a uh, an elevator pitch as if you're going to the Empire top of the Empire State Building of who you are and what you have done, because you have a, a real... I you have a rich background. I won't say colorful, but a no, rich very, background. Very, very rich. <laughs> Maybe full. colorful, too, but... <laughs> well, we won't judge. <laughs> yeah. on, a, on, a, on a good day. <laughs> exactly. On a good day, it's colorful. All right. So, um, so I uh, have done a lot of different things. I've been a DJ and music supervisor and... Uh, executive music producer at a jingle house and um, about a little a little over a year ago I was talking with my folks and we were trying to figure out uh, what to do about wanting to make an impact on prejudice and and racism and so we were talking, and my parents had a nonprofit called the Uncle Foundation in around mid 2000s, and the the sort of goal of that was to help underprivileged kids and kids in education. And they had a program called Pay Kids, where basically they paid kids to, if they got better grades, they would get points 
and then they could use these points to buy um, things online. And uh, we were talking about that, and I thought, well, why don't we, why don't we revive the Uncle Foundation and specifically deal with prejudice and racism? And so we liked that idea, and we were talking about it, and we came up with a few different programs. And uh, once we tried to register as a 501c3, uh, we found out that the Uncle Foundation, as a name, was already taken. Oh, dear. So we, yeah, we came up with different ideas, and we sent out um, an email to a people whose opinion we valued and said, what do you think of these different names? And Youth Against Prejudice came out as the winner. So we decided to go with that as a name for our organization. Cool. And, um, yeah, and so we uh, connected with um, Vista Del Mar, which is a incredible facility that deals with foster youth in Los Angeles, and they have put on our first program, The History of Hip Hop, which basically is the idea that um, hip hop is sort of a, an idea that you have all these different musical genres that contributed to the formation of hip hop without jazz, rock and roll, soul, gospel, funk. Hip hop wouldn't be possible. So we it's part history class and it's part a class where we give the kids a chance to work with a composer to write their own music. Oh, that mm. is cool. So I, yeah. So I teach the, the history part of it and we go over some key figures in these different musical genres. And, and the idea is to show that, Hey, uh, different people of different backgrounds and different, um, uh, sexual orientations and things have made th- these different musical genres that are the building blocks for hip hop. You know, I, I'm really glad you, you touched on that because hip hop has been so maligned uh, for whatever reason. I, I think I, I don't I don't want to say necessarily the greater society, but I know that. A lot of, shall we say, middle America or mainstream America, however you want to define that, um, has kind of put a a really bad stamp on hip-hop. And sadly, I fell into that camp until I had an opportunity Mm -hmm. to see the movie Eight Mile. And Mm -hmm. it so opened my eyes and allowed for me to gain a new respect. Now, admittedly, it's not my go-to music. It it isn't. And that's okay. But... I have a respect mm-hmm. for it, and I have a respect for the people who do it now, and and I think that being able to you know approach a subject like that even and say you know there's a prejudice against this genre of music now let let's tackle that I mean that is a really great uh, I I I don't want to say first step but maybe a building block in tearing mm-hmm. down this wall of prejudice that we've built up. You know uh, the, that humanity has built up over you know God knows how many decades now. So I I really applaud that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and it it is also interesting to think about how hip hop as a as a genre, as you say, was was maligned, and it was they had to fight to get their videos on MTV and to be accepted, and now it. It is the mainstream, not only in the U.S., but all over the world. Like, that's the crazy thing, is that you have people doing hip-hop in every country in the world, and it's become pretty dominant, and it's, it is fascinating how that has evolved. And, you know, with the, with the music comes the culture and all that comes with it of, of this is sort of the gold standard of of what young people are really excited about and want to emulate and do themselves. And and I think so, yeah, and one yeah. Of, one of the cool things all is now 
through this this uh, greater understanding that has taken place, we're seeing some rock acts that are now um, mm-hmm. embracing moments. I mean, Rush had a little hip hop a-, a little hip hop bit in one of the songs "Roll the Bones." Dream Theater, one of my favorite prog metal bands. I mean, they even did a song uh, that had a bit of a hip hop uh, number in it as well. So I I, I think. Well, I'm not sure what the heck it is I'm trying to say, except that, yeah, hip hop is is seeing a much greater acceptance, I think, throughout the world. And, yeah, it, it's being accepted in all music forms, I believe now. Yeah, I think so. I, I just have to give you a little prop dream theater. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty deep. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. He's he's uh, he is the prog rock. <laughs> I, I'm 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 a, I'm a big you know for, for for a gay man. It, uh, I'm a I'm a serious prog head. So yeah, I'm I'm a bit of a a bit of an anomaly in that respect. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that. Well, thank uh, you very much. <laughs> Uh, sure. <laughs> so with, um, go ahead. Oh no 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 no! I'm, I wasn't going to say anything. I, I was just going to say that I, I guess this uh, that hip hop is kind of, uh, I, the urban aspect of it is probably what the rest of society was rebelling against because that's what they equated it with and uh, that certain negative well I, urban I, element i, I we say. think and it's then, also they were afraid of it but it yeah and but it's become yeah. the the mode of self-expression for young people for many years now and it allows them to express their feelings in a way that is musical and you know allows them a little more freedom than uh, other musical forms shall we say and and i think that with the growing level of acceptance we're also seeing a greater diversity in messages that are being expressed through hip-hop yeah. now well what about a hip opera? oh god you had to go there i did yes you you went there didn't you <laughs> Well, it's uh, why not? Well, well, w- well so, so actually, some could argue that maybe Hamilton sort of, you know, you know I think you're onto something. Breach, breach that that gap. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and then we have some other some other programs right. too, uh, besides the history of hip hop. Um, Art is a voice for change. That's where. Um, Young people work with different artistic mentors, uh, either in the visual arts, dance, um, in theater or poetry, and they work with these mentors and they come up with their own original pieces of music to express themselves, how they've overcome uh, prejudice and racism, uh, or how they've sort of grown to become more tolerant and accepting accepting of others. Right. And um, so that's one program that we have. Another program is the Heroes Program, where this, is, this features scientists, artists, cultural leaders, political leaders, sports figures, and business, business people of all ethnic groups, um, including women, those in the LGBTQ community, uh, those with handicaps as well. And these are people that aren't often featured in uh, a history class that's taught at um, in school. And then the museum program is another program where the participants look at different cultures, history, that they otherwise uh, would not be able to experience um, in their own, in their own lives, or in their own school, and um, again, it's it's the idea that by exposing them to all these different cultures and people, that it gives them a better understanding and appreciation of those that uh, are different from themselves. Well, and I think there's something else going on because you, you mentioned how. You know, by introducing these kids to these these people who have achieved some kind of greatness, but it's not being reported in history class. I mean, you you look at say, you know, uh, 
uh, okay, a young a young gay kid uh, who mm-hmm. he, all of a sudden now he looks up and and he sees someone who has you know someone who's gay who's achieved or LGBTQ and has achieved some kind of greatness and so you're not only tearing down you know prejudice you're also giving representation and you're allowing yeah, these kids you're allowing these kids to finally sit up and say wait that could be me up there i could d- i don't have to be this 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 thing or this this person who who can't achieve anything i i can actually attain some level of success you know fame you know whatever you know fame is fame whatever we want to uh, refer to it as right. but to be able to say i i can achieve greatness in my life you know because and, and so, be my authentic self and, and exactly <laughs> and be my authentic self at the same time i mean that is the kind of representation that uh we're still screaming for so i i think you know what youth against prejudice is doing is fantastic in that it's it, it's it's sort of twofold, you know, tearing down prejudice, but also providing representation at the same time. Yeah, and that, that's exactly that's exactly what we want to uh, to achieve is to give uh, people, um, young people specifically, different role models than they typically uh, are exposed to. Um, yeah, because an actor or a, or a or a sports star or musician that has a lot of, uh, they get a lot of press and they get a lot of attention, but the scientists and the business people and, um, uh, some cultural leaders that maybe aren't all that well known. Yeah. Just to say that there's a, there is a whole wide variety of things that I can do as a, as a young as a young gay person or a black person or a Latino or Asian American um, or, or what, whatever the case may be. And, and that's exactly what we want to do is, is to, to give kids some empowerment as well as opening their eyes to all these different other uh, people that they didn't know. Like, Oh my gosh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. That there's, is an LGBTQ scientist or Absolutely. what have you. Mm-hmm. Or a, a woman mathematician who was a person of color that, that sent the, you know, the rocket to the moon. That helped get the rocket to the moon? Right. Exactly. Yep. I mean, exactly. wow, that's, mm-hmm. that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so how long has this program, has Youth and Prejudice been active, shall we say? Uh, well, we... So we just put we're just putting on our first program at um, at Vista Del Mar, and that started uh, last month, as a matter of fact. So it's taken a while, you know, it takes a while to uh, to get the programs together, and then to get the word out and to find partners where we could put the program on. And we're also going to be doing a crowdfunding campaign. Because obviously it takes money to make an organization absolutely like ours, and um, so yeah, so we're 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 quite new, mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Cool. Have you had? Um, and I, I granted, as you said, you're quite new. So, uh, but I have to kind of wonder: uh, has the pandemic been a bit of a problem in trying to? Uh, get things off the ground, shall we say? A- absolutely, absolutely, and that that has been a a bit of a stumbling block. And uh, initially, we were going to put the program on remotely, but uh, then we were able to um, put it on in person, and it's it's a lot better, obviously, when you're in the same room with mm-hmm. these young people, and you're able to. Um, really feed off their energy and answer their questions and listen to their comments. And, and yeah, it's, it's been a really, it's been a really great experience thus far and seeing them work with a composer and they get to, uh, you know, see how you make a song. And exactly. It's, it's been really gratifying. Yeah. Well, we'll just call it the damn demic. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Good. I, I think That's I'm really going to lie. Yeah, I think we should I call it that. I steal that. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a, an author friend of ours called it the Great Pause. And, <laughs> and I, right. I wrote something the other day because I heard somebody say, talking about the before times, and I thought, oh, my God, we, I live in a dystopian fantasy novel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, the damn demic. Good time. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Well, so, so with uh, with with where things are at right now, and granted, as you said, you know, this this is still kind of new and young. But for you personally, uh, how has this affected you? I mean, I, I've got. I would think. I mean, if it were me, that I would be reaping some personal benefits at the same time. Uh, well, absolutely, and again, seeing. Um, I've, I've always uh, liked working with young people and it's, uh, or being around young people and around their energy. Um, and it's kind of a, there's a great story in that the composer that's doing the program um, with me is actually my godson. And I met him and his family because they were my neighbors in the mid nineties. And he was a, a young child oh and I got to know them. And I, he has two brothers that live with him. And, and so I would take them to movies and museums and I ended up um, paying for their musical education. Uh, I got them music lessons and, um, and now to be working with him. Sorry, get a phone That's all right. That's okay. It, it's all right. It, I, it's a gratifying experience. Yeah, and we understand completely that mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's those things a, can it's affect just you. Been so wonderful to see yeah. to see him, Omar, now working with these kids and and showing them all the things that he learned. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Music is an amazing, it's, amazing thing. It, it can be is. very transformative in ways that. Nobody can predict. So yeah. uh, I, you know, I applaud you on that. We are big music fanatics in this house, and quite. Yeah, I, I've, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he. I mean, he brought the the uh, progressive rock, and I've I've seen far more than I ever would have on my own, and he's seen far more <laughs> opera than he ever would have seen hey, on hey, his hey, own. Hey, 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 hey. My grandmother was an opera singer, please. I grew up in, in the opera world, you know. I, I would have seen it anyway. So, you know, but we're supporters uh, of the arts, and, and certainly with, with what we do here, we are huge supporters of independent creators, whether it's musicians, and, and yeah. we talk to musicians, and uh, opera singers and and just all kinds of people and this uh, in itself doing what we do has helped us to be far more open and accepting of different cultures and different um, a lot of different things I mean, different art, art forms uh, art forms and yeah. things that we never would have uh, experienced before and you know people that we never would have uh, spoken to or interacted with before and it is just a, it's a wonderful thing and that for me that that is the the best part of doing this um, little venture that we have here <laughs> yeah th those are the benefits yeah. that that we've been reaping and and that's why uh i i was curious to see how it affected you because i was i was positive that you must have experienced something really wonderful out of having to you know have your fingers in the this this rich tapestry that makes up the human race you know, yeah. I I think that's that's it's 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 a beautiful thing. So, what do you have anything like coming up? Because you, you mentioned, I think you mentioned like a, a fundraiser or something. But do you have uh, what are some of the things that you have scheduled for the near future? Um, so we're just uh, talking to different organizations about putting on uh, different programs and. That's kind of where we're at now is we're just trying to um, bring our programs to as many organizations as possible. And, how, and yeah, and also the fundraiser. Yeah, too. how long do the program? That'll be happening in the next few weeks. 
How long do your programs usually run? Is it a, a, a weekend affair or is it a spread over time or? No, it's typically spread over time. It's, it's typically like six to 12 weeks, depending on the program and the host organization Ooh, okay. and That's, what their sort of desires are. That is yeah. um, in depth and I like that enormously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the idea. Is, is Somebody said, hey, we have two weeks. Can you put your program on? It's like, well, not really. It doesn't give <laughs> us enough time to to get in depth and to explore all these different things and expose the, the participants to as many people and ideas as we really want to. Right. So, yeah, it's a, it's a longer-term commitment. So I, I would imagine that uh, an organization like this requires, you, know, you, you used to mention fundraisers, so it requires donations. How can people uh, donate, if they want, to this organization? Uh, well, we, uh, on our Facebook page now, at Youth Against Prejudice on Facebook, there's a donate button. Um, and on our website, youthagainstprejudice.org, uh, there's a way that you can donate, and um, like I said, we're going to be having our, our crowdfunding um, campaign in the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, yeah, those two those two places uh, on our website or on Facebook, people can donate. Cool, fantastic! And if people want to learn, j- j- I mean, I, I, there's there those are some great ways for people to learn more about Youth Against Prejudice. Is there any other social media presence by which they can go to and find out more about this organization? So, besides Facebook and our website, we're also on Instagram at Youth Against Prejudice, and um, we're on Twitter as well. So, uh, yeah. But go to our website. I think that's kind of the best place to learn about us. Yeah, that's a it's a, a great looking Please. website. It's a very. I'm not, I'm not ordering you. <laughs> I'm asking. No, it, no, but it, it's it's a very good suggestion because the website is very. It's it's a very good looking, well put together website. It is. Oh, thank you. All right. Yeah, our 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 Matt, uh, who's our sort of social media person put it together so i'll tell him you said so coming from you that's high praise <laughs> oh my oh, <laughs> please we're small potatoes <laughs> what are you saying <laughs> we, we we learned by the seat of our pants using wordpress so <laughs> if anything's messed up it's me <laughs> oh well this has been really great and uh, we hope to hear more from you and and as you have more programs uh we will you know certainly talk to you again and we certainly want to know I about hope, the crowdfunding. So. We'll we'll yeah. definitely participate in that, and you know, publish that on our website. Yeah, and, well, and once that. once that is uh, set in stone, let us know, and we will happily run press releases for that. Yeah. And oh, that's so kind of you, fellas. We I greatly appreciate it, and thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure and so Absolutely. much fun. You guys are lovely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being on our show. Thanks for having me. You don't need to hear their identification. They're the two gay geeks. They can go about their business. Move along. That really was a great conversation. That was a fantastic conversation. I really enjoyed talking to him. I I did too. I I look forward to um, properly meeting him because, as you said, we did kind of see him at a book event uh, a couple couple years years ago. ago. Yeah, but... uh, it will be interesting, and it's also interesting to see what uh, what happens with this uh, program. I'm very, I'm very excited about very it. Very excited and about it. Yes, we're going to have uh, some things whenever they come up with their crowdfunding that uh, you can participate in. So look forward to that. And here's a few selected birthdays for August. Uh, what is it? Uh, August 16th through August the 22th. August 16th, Angela Bassett, actress, Black Panther, Contact. She mm-hmm. was in Green Lantern and a, a number of she other She was things. in Green Lantern? Yes. Oh, God, I haven't watched Green Lantern in yeah. a long time. I don't remember. And she started out in soap operas, uh, Ryan's Hope, Search for Tomorrow, hmm. and played Tina Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It? Wow. 
Leslie Ann Warren, actress, Miss Scarlet in Clue, which mm-hmm. actually was supposed to have been Carrie Fisher. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and she was Norma in Victor, Victor Victoria. Victoria. Yep. Yes. And at the age of 13, she won a scholarship to study with George Balanchine. She was a, actually a, a trained a dancer. dancer and, and that's what she was going to school for when she moved over to acting. Huh. Yeah. And she's also the wife, or at least I, I, still, I think she still is, of Richard Benjamin. Ah, I didn't, uh, didn't see that, but I didn't pay attention either to that. Mm. <laughs> now. Oh, my. What oh can my. you say about this wonderful person? Julie Newmar. Oh, my God. Thanks for the memories. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, that was to Wong yes, Fu. Yes, to Wong Fu. Yes. What, what, what is there to say about Catwoman? Statuesque. Yes. Did you know that she marketed her own brand of pantyhose in the 70s and the 80s? She held the patents for three patents for those. Why not? Hose. Yeah. Why not? It's amazing. And uh, when she was visiting her brother in college, she got the call to uh, be Catwoman in the Batman, Batman series. Fantastic. And her brother's friends, who were avid watchers of the show, convinced her to take the part. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I'm, I'm glad they did, because I'm, I'm sure it changed her life in ways she could never possibly imagine. Oh, my gosh. And, and if she hadn't, we would not have seen her at Phoenix Comic Con. Exactly. I, which was we, one of the highlights of my life. Yeah, we, we always talk about that. I mean, it, it, to see her and Burt Ward and, and Adam, Adam West, West on the stage on the together. Stage together. Wow. I mean, it was what, one of the, the best panels I've the ever attended. interaction, you know, between all three of them was just fascinating. And she still looks stunning. Yes, she did. Does. Mm. <laughs> uh, Taika Watiti, actor, writer, director. Our Kiwi crazy man. Uh, yeah, New Zealand. He's Maori descent. Uh, Thor Ragnarok, director, and Korg. Korg. I love Korg. <laughs> he is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he, he's just this laid back rock thing. <laughs> yeah, he, he's really chill. I, I, re- I, I love when I when, when Korg's going to be on, <laughs> yeah. which, which I'm very excited about the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie because, or uh, well, I know the Thor's in the new Guardians film. Um, I'm not sure if Korg is going to be in that, but I know that he's supposed to be in the new Thor film. Yes. Now, he's got six projects in oh, he's some a busy form guy. of production, including a Flash Gordon and a Time Bandits. Oh, my. He's doing yeah. Time Bandits? Yeah. And it, he was the first indigenous filmmaker to win an Oscar. Well, he's, he's brilliant. Yep. And let's see. Then a good friend of ours, David Wagner. Happy birthday, David. August 17th, Helen McCrory, actress, Narcissa Malfoy. Ah, and- Mama Jen, I I loved her. Hugo. Oh, oh my God. God! What what a uh, what a tragedy that we lost yeah, her. Yeah, sadly died of cancer earlier this year in April. I adored just, her. She's just a, I, a I, great actress. She is. I adored her in Hugo. Uh, Why she w- Damian Lewis? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They have two children, so yeah. I thought she was phenomenal in in Hugo. Such a beautiful role. Yes, it was. Mae West, writer, actress. Flirtatious blonde Why bombshell. You see me sometime. Yes, actually, her films were uh, and her writing. Uh, well, she, most of her films that she made were she wrote uh, spawned the Motion Picture Production Code. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> the creation saw the ratings. You know, the G, P, G, R, exactly. And what was I guess at the time X? Yes, and would. Um, st- Speak in double talk so that one more, it could you get know, past double the sensors? entendre. Yes. Mm. Uh, famous for her. Uh, in fact, a, uh, a radio show that she did with Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Oh, dear. Oh, my gosh. Was I filled that got with racy. double entendre. Yes. And uh, interesting little piece of trivia. Jerry Orbach was once her, her chauffeur. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. How about that? <laughs> Amazing. Gene Kranz. 
aerospace engineer, fighter pilot, and mission director for NASA during the Gemini and Apollo missions, including Apollo 11 and Apollo 13 mission. Mm -hmm. He was known for his dapper mission vests that were made for his for him by his wife, Marta, for I, each mission. I dare say he is one of the heroes that got the Apollo 13 crew yes. back to Earth. Exactly, he is. He's still alive. He's 87. God bless the man. Yep. Hazel Bishop, American chemist and founder of cosmetics company Hazel Bishop, Inc., inventor of the first long-lasting lipstick. And uh, th she actually lost control of the company because, oh. uh, you know, men and <laughs> how they they took over her company. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, but she also worked at this, as a stockbroker and... and specialized in cosmetics companies. She worked for Standard Oil in, during World War II and Good discovered grief. The, the cause of deposits affecting superchargers in aircraft engines. A very intelligent woman. Absolutely, absolutely. She was, she was ahead of her time. She certainly was. And uh, she created that lipstick in her home kitchen. <laughs> so Far out. Anyway, uh, then... Uh, friend of mine, a former co-worker, Char Kerrigan. Happy birthday, Char. August 18th, Patrick Swayze, actor, ghost, dirty dancing, Chicago, began his dancing career as Prince Charming from Cinderella in Disneyland's parades. Really? Yes. <laughs> and we, we cannot forget the uh, Julie Newmar connection. Uh, to Wong Fu. Oh, exactly. <laughs> he was in that. He was. He, he was Noxima. Uh, duh. <laughs> and uh, a little. Oh, no, no, he was Noxima. Oh he, shoot. He was. Um, oh yeah. Oh, oh shoot! Yeah. I can't remember who he played. Yep. Darn it. A bizarre bit of trivia. Interesting. He was born the year that the guiding light moved from radio to television in 1952. And died the year it aired its series finale in 2009. Really? Yeah. It's just an odd bit of uh, trivia there. It's kind of strange. Vita. Vita, yes. Rosalind Carter. She is 90, will be 94. Wow. On the 18th. And former first lady and wife of Jimmy Carter. Married 75 years. I, I love these two. Just love them. Key figure with Jimmy in the Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. She was yep. such a dignified first lady. Absolutely. And Max Factor, cosmetics pioneer and CEO of the empire that was started by his father, uh, created the makeup for use with Technicolor called Pan Cake. Cute. Pan dash cake. And the uh, it was so popular with the ladies that they would take it home from the studio for their <laughs> personal use. And he died in 1996 at the age of 91. Wow. I also have to say on August the 18th, it's our 25th anniversary. It's our 25th anniversary. anniversary. Yep. Of, of when we, <laughs> when okay, we first when met. When we first met, yes. Yes, exactly. And that was, uh, that's quite the story. <laughs> yes, it is. August 19th, Peter Gallagher, it's actor. Good timing. <laughs> been around for a while and most recently in grace and, grace frankie. and frankie yep exactly gene roddenberry oh my. writer creator star trek and he would have been 101, Earth, Final I think. conflict i think he would have been 101 i'm not yeah, sure I, I think i read that somewhere oh uh, survived two plane crashes i know it's well, amazing good thing. yeah <laughs> good thing we wouldn't have had star trek had he not you know had, had he died yeah and have uh gun will travel that's mm -hmm. where he met um uh, uh, D. D. Kelly. Yeah, and and the, yeah, and then later the lieutenant, which is where he met. Um, Why? Well, I, I, that's where he met Nemo, and I think he met Shatner there as well. Yep. And Jonathan Frakes, actor, director, now the Star Trek William alumni. Riker on uh, Star Trek received the nickname Two Takes Frakes <laughs> because of his filming style <laughs> on uh, one of the Star Trek films. Yeah, and calls Alfre Woodward his godmother. They became oh. friends in the 70s yeah. while working together. Oh, really? Yes. So that's probably yes. why he reached out to her when they were doing First Contact. Yes. And was considered for the master in the Paul McGann Doctor Who. Huh. 
He could have been That might have been different. interesting. That, that might have been a bit different. Yeah, I mean, I still yeah. don't like the way the master was written in that, right. in, that ep, uh, in that movie. Right. But it would have been interesting to see him play the part. He does have a, an anecdote that, I, it's, it, that he talks about when making First Contact. And there's this one scene in uh, Picard's ready room where there's this argument between um, you know Patrick Stewart's character and, and Alfred Woolworth's. And you're talking to master actors, and Frake says all he had to do was just sit back and smile and watch these two geniuses just chew the scenery towards each other. And he <laughs> says it was one of the highlights of his career. Yeah, I'm sure it was. He's also known as a very fun director and just yeah, just a cut-up and, and makes people feel very much at ease so probably they, why he kept being they asked, give their best is it, I'm sure that's why he was repeatedly asked to come back and direct yep and William Marshall another actor, Star Trek alumni he was in Blackula oh he was, god he was Blackula did we ever watch that <laughs> no <laughs> I think we need to and and Pee Wee's Playhouse is King of Cartoons, yep. and of course, Dr. Richard Daystrom. And The Ultimate Computer. Yes, and he is the cousin of Paul Winfield. Oh, really? Yes. Another Star Trek alumni. Exactly. Oh, far out. <laughs> yeah. Really Star Trek theme going on, <laughs> on here On August today. 19th, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we have uh, Facebook friend Reagan Sotalo and David Oh, happy birthday, happy birthday, guys. Happy birthday, David. We can't wait to talk to you again about oh, your no new kidding. book. Yeah. Looking forward to it. August 20th, Amy Adams, actress, Arrival, Julia and Julia. Oh, yes. And a ton of other things. Oh, my Lord. Lois Just Lane in, too many to, in uh, the DCEU. <laughs> yep. Too many to, to even think about. And interesting thing is that Meryl Streep taught her how to knit. Really? While yes. they were making that movie? <laughs> uh, apparently. Oh, how adorable. <laughs> yep. John Noble. John Noble? Uh, yes, that, that John, John Noble. Noble. <laughs> Actor. Lord of the Rings is Denethor. Uh, elementary is Moreland Holmes. And Fringe is Walter B- oh my. Bishop. I, Wal- I adore him. Walter in, <laughs> in Fringe. I think we all did. I pissed myself. <laughs> so it was just a little it's squirt. just a squirt. <laughs> That you was the died. very first episode. It was like, you oh died. my Lord. I had to pause <laughs> as you just fell out of your chair laughing. <laughs> and has five projects in production right now. Good for him. I, I really exactly. enjoy him. And he's an unbelievably nice man. Exactly. Sylvester McCoy, oh, actor. Boy. English crazy uh, man. Radagast in The Hobbit. He was the old man of Hoy in Sense8. And uh, let's see, what else? Um Oh, this little thing called Doctor Who. You know, and I'm really glad, you know, n- not to, I, I got to be careful how I say this, but it was so wonderful to see him break out of the Doctor Who confines, you know, because so many actors kind of get stuck in that and yet make, you know, appear in great projects like, like Sense8 yeah. um, and Lord of the Rings. You know, I I'm, I'm, was really happy for him in that. Yep. And Facebook friend, Christian Basil, and good friend of ours, Al Lux. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday Al. August 21st, Carrie Ann Moss, actress, Trinity and the Matrix movies, Jerry Hogarth in several of the Marvel series that were on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Um, Uh, She was was the lawyer. um, Uh, Definitely in Iron Fist and I believe in Daredevil. Yeah, yeah, Daredevil. Daredevil. And she was also in uh, Jessica Jones. Yes, yes. uh, I don't know if she appeared in Luke Cage. I don't recall. And I don't remember if she was ever in The Defenders. Yeah. And then we have Bartolomeo Giuseppe Guarneri. He was a luthier. He was, uh, a, I suppose you could say, a rival of Stradivarius. Mm. Uh, he broke off from his family and created a different style. And some of his um, uh, violins and violas that he created are some of the most prized even even more than Stradivarius. Ah, uh, didn't we? We saw, we saw of some of those uh, at, at the, the Phoenix Art in- Museum. Yeah, no, or, or the, the music museum. Instrument yeah. museum. Yeah, there was a uh, Stradivarius um, hey, the exhibit, exhibit. But they, they, they had, you can't some, talk about Stradivarius without talking about no, him. No, no, absolutely not. Just some of the most the finest made instruments in the world. And then Kim Cattrall, actress, Undiscovered Country. Big Trouble in Little China. She's she's a lot of fun in Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> yeah. But I adored her 
in Sex and the City. Yep. Oh my gosh, she was so good in that show. Yep. Uh, as an ally of the LGBTQ community, she presented at the uh, GLAAD Media Awards in uh, 2000. So Good for her. Yep. And then a friend of ours, Kevin Held. Oh, yes. Ari Marino and Keith Dupuis. Uh, also a- known AKA? As Katie Edwards. Happy birthday, Happy Keith. Happy birthday. August 22nd, Ray Bradbury, Uncle, writer. Crazy um, Uncle Ray. <laughs> Uncle Ray, yep. Yeah, wrote, he wrote Fahrenheit 451 on a rented typewriter in a public library. That's a brilliant book, by the way. Yep, it, it is. It really is. I, I finally had a chance to read it and was just... I mean, the man... Say, say what you will about his personality. He is one of the gifted... I mean, I don't count him among the Holy Trinity, but I would put him in the top five. <laughs> exactly. His great-great-great-grandmother was tried at the Salem Witch Trials in 1692. Oh, wow. But she escaped before being hung. Oh, good for her. And he wrote on a manual typewriter until 1999. Yeah. uh, When he had a stroke and then he started dictating uh, his... He was uh, very particular about such things. Yep. Well, he didn't own a computer and didn't own a TV until the last couple of years of his life. Didn't even own a TV? No. Oh, my God. Didn't drive... And didn't fly in a plane until 1982. Good heavens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't even have a driver's license. <laughs> he was somewhat of a technophobe. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then we have Claude De- Debussy, a French composer known as the first impressionist composer. His I, I love his music. Uh, I love the his structure of his chord structure. Mm-hmm. It, it's so ethereal and... He used the sustain pedal a lot, Mm. and uh, a lot of those sustained chords. Dorothy Parker, poet and satirist. She was also a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. She wrote uh, A Star is Born. Ah. Yep. And she was a very early feminist and uh, most famous today for her witticisms. Uh, some of them like, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than, than a, a frontal, frontal lobotomy. lobotomy. Right. And don't look at me in that tone of voice. And one of the interesting things, one of the games that uh, her, she and her friends, her witty friends, indulged in sitting at the Algonquin round table at the Algonquin Hotel in uh, New York City was one requiring each of them to come up with a facetious definitions for big words. <laughs> oh my. Among Parker's best was her pun on horticulture. You can lead a horticulture, but you can't make her think. Oh my god, <laughs> I like that. That's brilliant. <laughs> yep. And then we have uh, uh wife of my brother Bob, Rose Lane. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Rose. And that's it for the birthdays this Technorama, the podcast for geeks, because geeks are better than cool. You don't hear someone say, get away from me, you cool person. Who's going to have their 65-inch home theater system installed by the cool squad? Not me, that's for sure. How much cool cred do you have? Not enough to care about. Think you'll find any canned unicorn meat at thinkcool.com? It's just a part domain name. They don't even have roadkill in a paper cup. That's why you need to start listening to Technorama, because that's what geeks do. Go to chuckchat.com and listen to Technorama before you turn cool. I'm Daniel Radcliffe, and I believe that reaching out for help is the bravest thing a person can do. If you are struggling and need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at 1-866-488-7386. It's free and confidential, and trained counsellors are there to listen 24-7 without judgment. To learn more about the Trevor Project's life-saving work for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning young people, go to thetrevorproject.org. Well, I got a little ahead of myself there. I... uh... 
press the button and got the button happy mm-hmm. and before I said, go <laughs> listen to our friends Chuck and Craig over at Technorama Podcast. <laughs> anyway, we always want to give a shout out to our friends at Joshua Tree Feeding Program. They are a 501c3 nonprofit food pantry for the HIV and AIDS community in Maricopa and Pinal counties. They offer a place where the clients can come and select a wide assortment of nutritional foods to take home. They set it up like a store so that the clients can choose what food they want so that nothing is wasted. They've also opened up a second distribution day for the gender nonconforming community that may be experiencing food insecurity regardless of HIV status. They're an all-volunteer organization, and they could certainly use your help. If you want to give a monthly recurring gift or a single gift to Joshua Tree, go to jtfp.org. And it's time for our feedback. These are comments that we received uh, from articles that we ran on our website. And each of these articles will have their links in the show notes for this episode number 339 at tggeeks.com. Starting with, regarding Devet C's movies, Jungle Cruise. Not quite an e-ticket ride, but still fun. Got a comment from Paul Deeming who says, Not criticizing a movie I haven't seen yet, but I'm so tired of Dwayne Johnson being in just about every damn movie. (laughs) Okay. Uh, moving on uh, from Ellen Dowling. She says, excellent, insightful review to vet. And now regarding TG Geeks episode number 336, this is where we were talking about the Beatles and, and the Paul McCartney special or Paul McCartney series we saw on Hulu. And we got a comment on our YouTube channel from the Fizz Popcast radio show. They say another fabulous episode. Thanks, guys. Now, we're going to go back in time a little bit regarding Teej Geeks episode number 326. Now, here we interviewed artist Vic Gray slash Blood Rit, and uh, they are a phenomenal artist who has done some just volunteer work, if you will, for Katie Edwards' The Tarot Sequence, you know, drawing the most amazing characters. And we got a comment from Mandy Milton saying, Hello, dear gentlemen. I'm writing you to give my heartfelt appreciation for your podcast with my amazing child vic gray slash blood writ it gave me a deeper connection to them and understanding and joy i am so very grateful best regards mandy the, i wanted that wanna really say, touched yeah, me it, it's a great comment and i i want to say we've kind of held off because i wanted to just validate that that Truly was a connection to Vic right. before we we put it out there, and, yeah. and nothing against anybody. It's just you know I didn't want to say something and and then have it blow back on us. Right. I thought that was the most beautiful comment, and yeah. it it kind of justifies our purpose. I think exactly. And then closing off regarding TJ Geeks episode number three thirty seven. Now this was the first of two episodes where we had a hostful talking about Doctor Who. We got a comment on Twitter from Gay Puglia Podcast. Uh, and I should say that with this comment on Twitter, they posted this lovely picture of a little toy Dalek next to a uh, yeah. bottle of wine. <laughs> yes. And uh, then the, the text with that says, nice episode. We are in Puglia, in Italy, where most of our friends and neighbors think these are just robots. <laughs> but we know different, right? Exactly. Whatever they are, they seem to have acquired a taste for our region's primitivo wine. I can't imagine wine in Italy being primitive. So, But thank you for the comment, and yes. that's our feedback for this week. And if you want to leave a comment, you can certainly do that, and you can do that on tggeeks.com on each episode or each article that we run there. And everything is published to Facebook. You can comment there. Everything is published to Twitter. You can comment there and Instagram and any place else that you find us, such as our YouTube uh, channel. That's the episodes are published there. And if you feel like it, you can give us a call. We have a voicemail line. We do. 469-TG-Geeks. That is 469-844-3357. Leave us a voicemail. We'll play it on air. And as always, please Please play play nice. As everybody knows, we are huge supporters of independent creators, whether it's filmmakers, writers, comic book artists, or others. Give us, uh, you know... 
what was I going to say? I I'm not got sure. Lost. <laughs> we want to support independent creators by talking to them, going to their websites, going to their Twitter pages, every place that you find independent creators, especially during the pandemic uh, or the Great Pause or whatever you want to call it today. They could certainly use a little bit of uh, uplift and talk about them, talk to them and buy their stuff. If you are trans or are questioning your gender identity, and if you are in crisis or are feeling isolated and need someone to talk to, or you know of someone in a similar situation, there is a special hotline just for you. The hotline is provided by translifeline.org and staffed by trained counselors who are transgender themselves. The hotline in the U.S. is 877-565-8860. In Canada, it is 877-330-6366. Or you can go to translifeline.org to learn about the important work they are doing. Please reach out for help. You are not alone. Yeah, baby. They're like two gay geeks. They're together, you know. They're two gay guys and they're geeks. Is that okay? We have about a minute, 12 seconds. <laughs> we can talk a little about more this. than 12 seconds. <laughs> uh, Netflix did uh, everybody a huge favor by dropping the first ep first four episodes of season seven's Grace and Frankie. Oh, my Lord. This show is the craziest thing on the planet. And the first four episodes were a jewel. <laughs> they were I, man, we laughed so hard watching this. <laughs> it it is a great show, and I would encourage anybody that has not watched Grace and Frankie. There is some not safe for work language, but um, it is a great show with four great leads. Oh my god, the four, four yeah, the four leads are just brilliant. It's but just, so is the supporting cast. Absolutely. They're hilarious. I mean, this show is just a it's it's a jewel. It's an absolute delight. You won't be sorry. Uh and and I'm so glad that Netflix decided to give us the first four episodes because of the stupid damn damic that we're in. Exactly. God bless them for it and we'll get the remaining 12 in 2022. <laughs> And it's time for our weekly review. These are the articles that we ran on our website at tggeeks.com this past week. And the links for each of these articles will be in the show notes for this episode number 339 at tggeeks.com. Starting with Sunday, August 8th, Nerdy Chupacabras, number 60. On Monday the 9th, TG Geeks episode number 338. On Tuesday the 10th, Amazon Studios releases Cinderella on Amazon Prime, September 3rd. On Wednesday the 11th, Dinette Season 2 on Brick TV, September 24th. On Thursday the 12th, oh, this one looks very interesting. Everybody's Talking About Jamie trailer on Amazon, September 17th. On Friday the 13th, Hamish Downey's Five Questions with Matt, oh my goodness, McNamon. McNamon. McManaman. McMan. Thank you. I can't say it. On Saturday the 14th, AIDS Diva, The Legend of Connie Norman premieres in L.A. at Outfest August 21st. And that's it. That's it for TG Geeks Review. <laughs> Thank you. I'm having problems today <laughs> with the buttons. <laughs> It's time for some shout outs. First, uh, to Geek of All Trades. He is Brian Weber. He had a little snafu with his Twitter account. So, Arkel, as we fondly know him, is now Geek of All Trades on Twitter. And Geek is spelled G, the number three, the number three K of All Trades. Uh, he's also referred to as Brian the A list YouTube. The, oh boy, I always get this one wrong. Brian the and list the ampersand, YouTube, list the ampersand list youtuber i know i always mess that up 
Uh, he also has his Arkle Times Post Dispatch News. Yes, it's back. And you can find that by finding him on Twitter. Search for Geek of All Trades. And while you're looking for all things Arkle, go to his YouTube channel, Arkle Studios, youtube.com slash Arkle Studios. He has a number of things there. His Shameless Cash Grab series, which is in season six. His Rans vs. Zombies series. Yes, it's over, but you can still find it there. Uh, as well as Arkle Tier Ranks. He ranks various things there. As well as his game videos of Trick and Treat and Star Trek Online. We must also give some shout-outs to a couple of Facebook groups for allowing us to post our stuff there. And there, uh, So first, two gay geeks after hours. Uh, big thanks to the moderators for letting us share away our stuff there. And their URL is facebook.com slash hours. And then to the gay geek for pretty much the same. And their URL is facebook.com slash group slash the gay geek. And as always, special thanks to their moderator, Jeremiah Reeves. And thank you, Jeremiah. And we can be found on Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Amazon Podcasts, as well as where other fine podcasts can be found. Check us out also on Sci-Fi Radio at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific Time on Tuesdays. And listen to the other a geeky internet radio station, 24 hour content. Please rate us and view us on iTunes and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that should do it for this episode of TG geeks webcast. Be sure to check out the article for the webcast episode. We'll have several links on the page of things we talked about. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page or our website, tggeeks.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357. From TG Squared Studios, I'm Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. Please be kind to yourself and those around you. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. Peace. Cheers. <laughs>